on today's show. We break down Isaiah Thomas's Cavs debut and debate the craziest shot from last night in the NBA. In Crossfire, who's the sixth man of the year? Which rook should be in the dunk contest? And new details emerge about Kyrie's controversial departure from Cleveland. It's Wednesday, January 3rd. Starter starts now, 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 now. Good evening, sweet world, and welcome to the starters presented by Jack Daniels Tennessee Honey. Whether you're joining us live right now on NBA TV, watching us later on YouTube, maybe listening to the podcast, doesn't matter. We're happy to have you. I'm Jay Skeets, and alongside me, as always, that's Tess Mellis. Thank you for joining us. To his right, the international man of mystery, taking it to the max, Lee Ellis. Friends. Lily. Mm, Lily, and last, certainly not least, over yonder, that's the bearded one. That's Trey Kirby. Hey, yo! Hey, yo! TK, what's up? Well, I'm here at the internet looking for your best tweets at hashtag the starters. And guys, last night, one of the NBA's physical marvels made his long awaited return, and the crowd went wild. Not Isaiah Thomas. We're talking about Carl Malone getting back in the wrestling ring on WWE SmackDown in Orlando last night. He helped Bobby Roode do the curtain call, chug some water, poured a ton on his head for some reason, and then kind of faked his way through Roode's glorious intro. He doesn't know what he's doing. I don't know what he's doing, but everybody's having a good time. And now this does mean that Carl Malone might be making another run at wrestling, but for today it means that we get to fire the pun gun using hashtag NBA wrestlers. So send us your favorite NBA wrestlers. It could be current players. Like for instance, Stone Cold Steven Adams, a guy that we're always bringing up, or maybe even Hacksaw Jimmy Butler. Could also be Hulk Horford, another current player, or how about some retired players like Ravishing Rick Fox, or even an entire team like The Rock. It's Whatever it is, we want to hear from you, so let us know on Twitter. What's your favorite hashtag NBA wrestlers? Send us your best tweets to hashtag NBA wrestlers or hashtag the starters. I'll see you in either way if you smell what I'm cooking. All right, yeah. Nice. Fire the pun Mr. gun. Mr. Perfect. Get those tweets in. All right, we got a fun show tonight. We're going to uh, dissect the latest news regarding Kyrie Irving's departure from Cleveland. We'll get into that. Tass and Trey go head to head in Crossfire. Lee's got a very solid play. But let's start with a little what you got. If you're new to the show, here's how this works. Trey is going to throw some questions at us. We'll debate them. Ultimately decide on an answer, but you got to be careful. There's only one correct response, and that's whatever TK says it is. Trey. That's right. After last night, it's official. Isaiah Thomas is back. The two-time All-Star made his debut for the Cavs last night, scoring 17 points in 19 minutes in his first game since May. Was it a return? Was it a debut? Who knows? But it was fun to watch. Guys, was IT's Cavs debut surprising or expected? What you got? Of course it was surprising. A point per minute for Isaiah Thomas. He said he didn't think he was going to play that good after the game. It surprised him, so I'm pretty sure that we should yep. be surprised as well. And that's why I think it was partly the reason he chose to play against the Blazers rather than the Celtics tonight because he didn't know how good he was going to be. But yep. when Dwayne Wade takes his post-game interview and he says, that guy's a score, just to be impressed by his teammate for the first time, seeing him the first time after seven months of not playing basketball to be given that compliment by a Hall of Famer, you just know Isaiah's got it in his blood and he's got it in his genes and we all just thought maybe that hip injury got to him. But yeah, he was a step slow, but he wasn't incredible. But Good start. I think, yeah, I think the Cavs got his conditioning right, actually, because he looked fresh and he looked like he sort of was in mid-season form. I know they did a lot of five-on-five -five work for him yep. to get him ready for that. But I think overall, he would be pretty happy with that because you saw a couple of bumps there, which is good. Hit the floor, test out that hip, see how his body responds to that. But also a couple of those classic Isaiah moves, those little zigzag jump shots to pull up three in transition. He made a couple of smart passes to LeBron and Dwayne Wade. Make sure you're getting those guys the ball. Overall, I think the Cavs have got to be pretty happy with that. So if you're Ty Lue, he must be feeling really excited because it gives you another option on offense, another guy who can score. But also, if LeBron is going to create, Isaiah can park himself in the corner and knock down threes. He's a good shooter, so uh, all good things. Yeah, first off, the NBA is just a better place with Isaiah Thomas back on the basketball court. He's one of the most exciting guys to watch in the league, especially of his stature and just him being able to get buckets. So that's great. Welcome back. The interesting part to me is going to be when he starts because he comes off the bench last night. That worked out fine. He looked solid there with the second unit when LeBron was on the bench with Wade. They sort of built the lead there in the fourth. It'll be interesting, though, when he starts and gets up to his more regular minutes to see just how he plays on the, or off the ball excuse me, with LeBron, heavy, mm. heavy minutes with LeBron. I think it'll work because he was not that bad at it, even when he was with Boston, of playing off the ball because he's a great three-point shooter. But that'll be something to watch, but that's a good problem to have yeah. if you're close to But I'm with you guys. Uh, a definitely a surprising 
solid 19 minutes putting in the 17 points in a win. I'm <laughs> really interested to see the rotations you mm. mentioned with Ty Lue. You're going to play IT for sure, Yeah. but you kind of want to play Dwayne Wade at the end of games because he's been yep. chipping in. You want to play Brun, but you want Corver out there. There's a lot of guys to play in this rotation. Yep. All of a sudden, it seems like Derrick Rose just way out of the rotation, Calderon out of the rotation. There's a lot of guys to play. About rotations, LeBron James played 34 minutes, his fewest minutes in over a month since late November. That is great, great news because Isaiah Thomas can just take the offense upon himself. LeBron can rest a little bit, you know, in that fourth quarter, as you yep. mentioned, he just chilled out. LeBron's shown in the past he's happy to defer to other guys as well. Dwayne Wade in Miami and Kyrie in Cleveland when he was there. He doesn't mind other guys taking the load. When it comes to crunch time, that might be a little bit different. Yeah. LeBron probably wants a ball in his hands again. But as I was saying earlier, that's okay because if Isaiah's on the court and he's likely to get a shot... He know, he, we know he can knock it down, so uh, I think it's just everything looked great for him last night. A-plus coming from this side of the room here, Trey. Surprising, expected, what's the final answer? I'm with you guys. It's surprising. I didn't expect him to play that much, let alone look that good. Yep. Great start for the little guy. Anyways, a month ago, we were asking if the Clippers should fire Doc Rivers. Now they've got Blake Griffin and Milos Teodosic back in the lineup. They've won four straight in six of their last seven, and they're just a game out of the eighth seed in the Western Conference. But how are they going to finish, guys? Are the Clippers making the playoffs or nah? What you got? Uh, it's a little <laughs> too early to write them off, for sure. They're, yeah. they're, they're a good team, especially when Blake Griffin's back. Six of seven wins is nice, but they've only beaten one really good team in that stretch, and that's the Houston Rockets. Other teams, not playoff contenders, should beat those teams. But it just makes such a difference when they're healthy. But the problem is they're always running into injury right. problems. Right. Blake Griffin's missed 14 games this year. Gallinari, Tia Dosic, Austin Rivers is out right now. But uh, Patrick Beverly's out for the season. They always run into problems, and that's where I wonder if they can sustain this level of play throughout the season. I think things are going to come back to haunt them. Good thing is, though, they're in a race. There's four teams. They're right there. There's five teams going for four spots, and I think they're as good as any of those other teams at full strength. I'm going to go out on a limb, and I'm going to say they're going to make it because they've gone through most of their injury problems. Well, you know, the Pelicans... <laughs> Haven't really ever. John Rondo was out. Sure. But do you think they're done with their play? Their, their yeah. Injuries? Who knows? You're right. I mean, I I'm not Judge Gabor. I do not know the next three months what what it holds for for the Clippers. But uh, <laughs> the you know, what? The, the fact is the I bottom. I gotta look up Judge Gabor here real quick. The bottom sure half of the Western opinion. playoff teams haven't met expectations. You're watching the Thunder, Nuggets, Blazers, and Pelicans. You know, really close to 500. The Clippers, yeah, they're knocking on the door. So. Why the heck not? Blake returned after a month. We expect him to be out for two months. Mm -hmm. they're, they're in this little run here where they're not leaving California for like four weeks mm -hmm. straight. They've got an easy January schedule, so do the Pelicans. But again, Pelicans should have ran away with a spot. Th those teams down there, there's a lot of variance in expectations. Where the Nuggets going to be good? Where the Clippers going to be good? Um, and you're seeing some of those teams just not be incredible. Yeah, and you look at who they've played, too. They haven't played those teams. That's yeah. the problem here. And I'm talking about the Nuggets, the Blazers, and the Pelicans. Of those three teams, and they got nine games against them this year, they played them twice. One was a win, one was a loss. They haven't even played the Nuggets. So mm. those, to me, are the games that you're circling if you're a Clippers fan. they got to pick up those quality wins against those teams that you guys are saying they're trying to get into the playoffs against. You know, they're not going to beat the Mighty Warriors or the Loaded Rockets a lot of nights. They're going to beat a lot of the bad teams, but it's those teams that they're fighting for. And if they're healthy, they can. And if Lou Williams continues to play the way he is playing right now, you know, just picking up Player of the Week honors, rightfully so. I mean, I know a lot of people are not probably watching Clippers games right now, but Lou is on fire, on fire, you know, off the bench, scoring 40 the other night, another huge game last night against the Grizz. He's having the best year of his career. Yeah. yeah. Literally. I, 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 Hopefully he can keep it up because a streaky shooter like that, we know he's probably going to hit a cold patch at some point. But right now, I mean, he had 40 off the bench the other night, 33 last night, I think it was. So what are your picks? Did you guys pick? Uh, I, I go no because I just don't trust them staying healthy as well. But it's probably going to come down to the final week of the season, honestly, with one of those teams. Because none of those teams, like you said, like blow me away either. Outside yes. of the Thunder, they're going to be a lock, I think, for the playoffs. But those other crew, you know, you can't put a lot of faith in them as well. So yeah. it's, it's going to be tight. But if Lou and Austin Rivers, who obviously didn't play there – but has been great for them. I mean, those guys continue to score. It takes a lot of pressure off Blake to do absolutely everything. Yeah. And Teodosic, they're 9-3 and three when he's in there. I know you love him. He was your Rookie of the Year pick. They're a solid team when <laughs> he plays. Pick. They're a solid team when he plays. Trey, what's the answer? Playoffs or nah for the club? I mean, I say nah, but I'm no Zsa Zsa Gabor. I don't know <laughs> the answer. Anyways, I hope you guys like Filter because, hey, man, there were some nice shots last night. Like Manu Ginobili, who accidentally made a three-pointer while trying to throw an alley-oop. Or Michael Beasley who hit the rare 5.3 swirl toilet bowl shot wow. for the Knicks last night. Still going. Or Dwight Howard, who made an and one alley-oop, even though he never caught the basketball. Or even Jay Crowder, 
who hit an impossible and one that didn't count because he shot it over the backboard. Guys, what was the craziest shot? Manu, Beasley, Dwight, or Crowder? What you got? Wow. <laughs> what do you pick? What do you pick? Uh, I think it's Manu because the crazy part was Beasley going up the floor because he didn't know that it went in. I mean, oh, he wrote, knew it went in. Uh, did he? <laughs> He's just playing. Well, games the rest did. The rest did. Yeah, Lee, watch him. I don't. I don't That's know. That's classic Beasley. He's like, nah, <laughs> he didn't shoot it, so it doesn't count if it went in. <laughs> yeah, nobody knew that it went in. I, I guess Michael Beasley perhaps did. Pop says he didn't know it yeah. went in after the game when asked about it. He said, you know, Ginobili and all his assistant coaches were screaming it went in, but he had no idea. He was yelling for them to stop it and check it, which they obviously did in game the three. That one is pretty crazy, though. It's not a shot, even though it counts. <laughs> Technicality there. I, I'm, you know what's weird? I'm going to go with Crowder. Because that should count. That <laughs> That's a shot that didn't count. Yeah, I know, but this <laughs> angers me. Why shouldn't that count? No, it should have counted. Yeah, I mean, and does... the referee calls it counted. Good on the first uh, look here. Watch the ref in the corner. Yeah, and like, he yeah, says, what? yep, but bang. Yeah, yeah I guess the, the rule is because it's behind the backboard. Yeah, but because it didn't you can touch it... anything. Yeah, 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 but what if it does? That's, oh, okay. that's why they ruled out everything sort of over the back. Right, right. It's, it's, yeah, it's an interesting but those are some of the best shots when it goes off the top of the glass yeah. or hits the shot clock and goes in. I'll go with that one. These were all great. Yeah. Are you going with Beasley because you've done it before? <laughs> of course I've done it before. Yes, yeah, so it has to be the Dunny Ball. I mean, uh, to do 5.3 revolutions the Dunny around ball? the hoop, that's what it's technically called, oh. the Dunny Ball. Yeah. yeah, right. Yeah, we have to uh, change it for the American audience. Right. Uh, yeah, we, we did it in the studio yeah. ourselves. How many uh, rotations did you get on your Dunny? Yes, I, I believe it was 5.3. The exact same. Well, yeah, it was. <laughs> yes. Wow. Yes. Yes. I yeah. A ball can't spin more than <laughs> five point three times on a rib. Oh, man. four. We got nine, a good four revolution. Oh yeah. Oh, five. Yeah. Yeah, five. Beautiful. Five. Five. Close. All right. Dwight shouldn't have counted. He grabbed the rim. <laughs> yeah. It's true. Yeah. true. Trey, what's the answer? Uh, I'm actually have to agree with Lee on this one. I think it's got to be Beasley because we get to see the Dunny Bowl. Yeah. <laughs> That's the exciting thing. We actually get to see Lee's Dunny Bowl as well. Yeah. We do have yeah, we <laughs> We're waiting. Wow, well, look count. how long this was filmed ago. We don't One, have SD cameras back on. Do we have any three. lights? Wow. Oh, no, I yours wasn't five. Wow. Well, yeah. Three, four. It's back to make a five argument. <laughs> All right. Let's hear uh, whether or not you what agree a beautiful dunny boy. with Trey's answers. Let us know on Twitter, hashtag the starters. All right, coming up next, Tass and Trey step into the crossfire. Debate a couple of wards, some dunkers. This will be a blast. Don't go anywhere. Crossfire presented by Tiso. Here's how this works. The champ will take on the challenger in three rounds. And at the end of it all, I'll declare a winner. As always, the Crossfire Championship belt is on the line. Round one. We've been away for a hot minute, so let's talk NBA awards. Guys, who do you have as your leading sixth man of the year candidate? Here we go. I'm going with Dwayne Wade from the Cleveland Cavaliers because he has the rare narrative backing him for a six-man mm. case. You don't see that very often, but the Cavs struggle out of the gate. Wade asked to get moved to the bench. Now the Cavs have one of the best benches in the league. He's the leader of their second unit. He's only putting up 12-4-4 four, and four off the bench, but he looks like prime D-Wade for, you know, five minutes at a time, which is kind of the perfect move for him right now. I also think it'd be pretty cool for him to have a six-man of the year trophy standing up next to a finals MVP, all-star MVP, very out of place. Ooh. It's Bro Lou Williams. The name's Sweet Lou, but that boy be nasty. Ooh. You ask me what can he do, I say what can't he start the game on the bench, finish as a winner. The guy's <laughs> like fam. The guy's like fam. A second son for Doc Rivers. Uh, 21 and a half points per game for Lou Williams. He's having his best year. He's the 17th leading scorer in the NBA. In the entire NBA, only 16 guys score more. How can you not give this award to him? It belongs whoa, 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 to Lou Williams. Yeah, hot rapped, start. Rapped. Hot start, hot start here in Crossfire. Round That's two. That's an old rap I pulled out of the Round end. two, Jazz rookie <laughs> Donovan Mitchell says he would love an invite to compete in the 2018 Slam Dunk Contest. Cool, but what about you guys? Who's your dream rookie dunk contestant? Here we go. That guy, Donovan Mitchell. We, all, we need a little guy in the dunk contest every single season. This guy looks great during regular season play dunk in the basketball because he's 6'3". At 6'3", he'd be the shortest guy in several years since 2014. He just looks cool and he's throwing down dunk contest dunks in regular season games. Yeah, but here's the thing, Tess. I'm an idiot, so I still think that big men can win the dunk contest. <laughs> Give me John Collins from the Atlanta Hawks. He's very tall, but he's very skinny, so it still looks good when he dunks. He's got mad hops and this is the 10 year anniversary of Dwight Howard winning the dunk contest. Maybe it's time for a center to win again. It probably won't happen. Right. Most centers that get into the dunk contest disappoint, but not John Collins. He's got the great nickname, and Hawks always do well in the dunk contest. 
most winners of any team. Ooh, nice fact there. Dropping facts here in Crossfire Raps in 2018. And facts. All right. Raps versus facts. <laughs> Round three. 2017 has come and gone, so let's look to the future, guys. What's your one NBA wish for 2018? Here we go. I want my favorite team, the Chicago Bulls, to be terrible like they're supposed to be. It was fun having them good in December. They went 10 and 6, but that's not the point this season. Lottery reform is coming next year, so the time to be bad is right now. They had the worst record in the league before Nikola Mirotic came back. Now they've got the seventh worst record in the league. We're going the wrong way by going the right way. Be bad, Bulls. Look forward to 2018. Lots of losing. <laughs> I want Joel Embiid to be healthy. They can't decide if he's playing or if he's not playing. Like tonight, they declared him out, then they declared him back in. He's on pace to play, you know, about 62 games this season. We know the Sixers aren't a playoff team. If he's not in, they have a terrible record when he's not playing. The league is much better with Joel Embiid playing. Can we get a tiger bomb to make him healthy? Rub it on his knees, rub it on his ankles. It's just a weird situation. All right, all right. Great crossfire battle. He wants the Bulls to stay losing, but Trey stays winning. Still Crossfire champion, TK, Trey Kirby. Yeah, yeah, you know I got the belt. Take a deep breath. You know how it smelt, bad. Upside down, that's what it smells like. <laughs> what a battle, all right, when we come back, Kyrie LeBron, new details have emerged about Kyrie's departure. Are we buying this beef still? Come on back. The Starters is brought to you by Jack Daniels Tennessee Honey, official partner of the NBA. Welcome back to The Starters, where it's time for a special Cavs Celtics edition of Is This News? Because, man, oh, man, there was a juicy, juicy headline going around today. <laughs> oh, it's juicy! So juicy, a juicy whopper of a headline comes from NBA.com, reframing Jackie McMullen's ESPN story. It reads, report. Cleveland Cavaliers explored dealing Kyrie Irving before his trade request. Is this news? Ooh, I love me some Whoppers. Those were juicy. This, eh, it's not that juicy. I mean, what is <laughs> what is the big news here? That Kyrie Irving was involved in a trade had, uh, deal, conversation. There was a phone picked up. Kyrie Irving's name was mentioned. <laughs> I mean, what, what, what is the headline here? He obviously yeah. wasn't extremely happy in Cleveland. I mean, this just sort of reiterates but that. But was that because of them? No, in yeah, that, that, that's what I mean. No, okay. I mean, uh, you don't get traded from a team that you just hit a championship shot. Went all, went through all that he went through because of one trade rumor in June? No, I mean, he, there were some things that, as were reported months ago, he wasn't happy with. LeBron, the entire organization, being second fiddle. Yep. Yeah, I mean, that's what he wasn't happy with, not mm -hmm. a trade call. Around the time of the trade rumor, though, there is so many rumors going around. You don't know what to believe. So people are throwing out all sorts of names. And I believe some teams and general managers throw out a guy's name just to test market value as well. And the, the deal that was being reported was going to get the Cavs Paul George and Eric Bledsoe, right. Eric Bledsoe being one of LeBron's guys, and Paul George wanting out of Indiana. So it made sense at the time. Uh, throwing Kyrie out there was basically what you were going to have to pay in order to get one of those guys in return. So there's just so much rumour and so much speculation. You don't really know what's true. So I think we did hear this at the time, but you probably didn't buy too much into it thinking that the Cavs weren't going to deal away the guy who hit the biggest shot in the franchise history. It all comes down to what sort of you're saying there, Tass, to me. Whether Kyrie only truly got upset with the Cavs organisation after, as Jackie McMullen says, after David Griffin, then, co then GM of the Cavs, made the call to try and get a Bledsoe or a Paul George or at least kick the tires on the possibility of that. If that is sort of the progression there, then yeah, maybe you could see then why Kyrie's like, what? I hit the biggest shot in franchise history. I'm a huge part of why we ultimately got a title here in Cleveland. And now you're looking to, you know, to trade me and Channing Fry to, to maybe bring in Eric Bledsoe, mm. obviously under the same management there as LeBron's guys and Rich Paul there, so that would anger you. But you're right, if you don't, if you think it was a bunch of other factors and just Kyrie maybe just wanting a chance to run his own team, then it doesn't really have much impact mm -hmm. on any of this. And this is just, you know, a great headline to head into tonight's game between the Cavs and the Celtics on ESPN. And we got LeBron going against Kyrie mm -hmm. for the second time this year. It's juicy. It's uh, fun. No, it is juicy. I mean, because they are, we sort of think they're great friends just because they won a championship together, but they never really were. No, no. And, and you never really saw them out together hanging out like Wade and LeBron did in Miami. These guys were teammates, but not necessarily best friends. And Kyrie has shown 
why he wanted to get out of Cleveland now. I think you can see the way he's been playing in Boston. The level of his game has imp improved and increased. And he's shown that he just wanted to be the man on his own team. And I think that's uh, happening. we got to get Jim Ice on the phone. Did they ever hang out, Jim Ice? <laughs> that's a juicy one. <laughs> that's a juicy one. <laughs> All right, we got to take one more break. <laughs> when we come back, though. <laughs> Lily answers with the very solid play. Shout out to Jim Ice. Hope you're watching, Jim. <laughs> The law of the Tyson Tampa. Exactly what they do. Over the top. Count it. They say score the basket. There are 12 games on tonight, so you know we're going to get some fantastic endings. Join them. Join us here on the NBA TV tonight. Crunch time, 9 p.m. Eastern. Catch them all. All right, we asked you to fire the pun gun. Carl Malone was back wrestling, so we wanted your hashtag NBA wrestlers. You came through in flying colors. Oh yeah, whole bunch of them coming right at you. A lot of juicy ones here. Jason says, Yao Sting, and we're off and running. The phenomenal CJ Miles, Ricky the Dragon Rubio, Denzel the Hammer Valentine, oh, the big boss Manu Ginobili, the Tim Dunker Taker, Rowdy Rodman Piper, also Rowdy Roddy Pippen was one we came up with upstairs. Say hello to the bad guy, Razor Ramon Sessions, a classic. Rick Flaherty, Woo! <laughs> <laughs> the Diamond Dallas Mavericks, the under 500 Lakers, not bad. Dude, Kevin Love, girl mustache, Bam Bam Biombo, Booker T Mac, Cactus Jarrett Jack, and we'll finish it up with Macho Man Randy Foy. This was a great one. Good job, everyone. Yeah. All right, great work, everyone. Last night's pick and play was the Hornets Kings. I was the only one to take Sacramento. I was the only one wrong because the Hornets ran away with that one. So. Try and even it up tonight. Yeah, we got Cavs Celtics it's on ESPN. Big game. Trey and I like the Celtics at home. Lee and Tass like the Cavs in a back to back situation. All right, Lee Lee, who gets the honor for a very solid play? We're going to Madison Square Garden and it is Jarrah Jack with the Dr. Evil laser. Oh boy. Check it out there. And it's cancer with the finish. That's what I call. A very solid play. Timely. I, I saw Austin. Uh, I saw Austin Powers over, uh, yeah. the, over the break. You had a great break there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this time. is from uh, Aaron and Anthony at the garden there. They uh, must have seen the laser last night. Great job. It's a great sign. sign. That's how you draw a star, by the way. Tom. Oh. Yeah. oh. <laughs> Ouch. All right, that's it for us. We'll see you guys tomorrow night. Enjoy the games. Thanks for joining us, folks. And remember, for all your Austin Powers references, watch our show in 2018. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a freaking break here, man. <laughs> Brace the night, people. <laughs>